when I discuss with, with reporters and especially reporters that I have the impression are doing quality work on these issues, I realize that they are often reporters which prepare way in advance uh, their work. Having some sort of exchange between the media and the various people that the media is trying to portray or inform or, or, or create a story around I think is important. Build networks with migrants organizations and speak to migrants themselves so that it doesn't just become a, a coverage of a phenomenon, but as we say, you know, at the heart of the phenomenon of migration are human beings. You do need at the same time to be research savvy, and nowadays you can find a wealth of information uh, online. Uh, I think uh, uh, there are so many organizations, including the United Nations Alliance of Civilization, that uh, produce uh, literature on on, on cultural diversity, on intercultural dialogue. We do need uh, media institutions to put in place uh, measures that will ensure that the journalists do have the information resources needed in order for them to become uh, uh, better informed. It really is all about a partnership, about the media understanding our constraints, about us, international organizations, understanding the constraints of today's media. And, and being more user-friendly towards one another. We need to encourage journalists to be confident enough to say, hold on, I've got a bit more work to do, or we need to follow it up in this way. But I think the, 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 most, the best advice I, I, I can give to journalists is, is, is to have the courage, when you feel it's not right, to say, I need time. It's not right. We think there are around 214 million migrants in the world today. Now I can tell you that that is one in 35 people on the face of the earth. I can tell you that's the equivalent of the population of Indonesia, which is the fourth most populous country in the world, and that's pretty scary. Or I can say to you that's 3% of the world's population. What are you worried about? 97% of the world's population don't move, don't intend to move, and are not an issue. So the way that you interpret data and use it to inform or alarm, I think, is very important. There isn't a country in the world that isn't affected in some way um, by the issue of migrants or, or migration related issues. And let's face it, I mean, we see more xenophobia today um, than we've ever seen before. Um, and I think in some ways, personal opinion, um, having access to the amount of media that we have and the amount of connectivity that we have makes that possible. Social media has one huge advantage, that it for the first time gives a voice to migrants. Migrants can basically individually uh, tell you know, their daily lives uh, without going through the filter of a journalist or an editor, uh, without basically you know, uh, trying to grab the attention uh, of the media to tell their story. Migrants have something to say about uh, the situation, their own situation. And to give a voice to these people will be, I think, interesting. Look at the evidence listen to researchers, employ more migrants as journalists, speak to migrants, be balanced, understand there's two sides of the story, recognize the complexity of migration, that it can't all be answered. Rarely do we see migrants speaking for themselves, engaging, in a sense, uh, assuming agency as, as migrant um, 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 uh, spokespersons of, of their own issues. So I think that effective, an effective story would be one that, that, that addresses their issues from their points of view. The person who, is, who has migrated, who is, who is a migrant worker, who is living in a foreign country, who has a normal family, who has nothing peculiar to say to you, who will tell you that he lives in good harmony with his neighbors, who is not an activist of uh, his diaspora and he's not trying to be uh, uh, elected in, in, in that, he's just trying to live a normal life. And, and maybe what would be interesting is just trying to discuss with this person and trying to understand what his hopes are, what he's looking for in the future, how he's trying to help people in his home country. Which is of more interest, that there may be an asylum seeker in the UK living in a nice house in Chelsea, or that between the migrants each year send home 400 billion US dollars? For me, the second is a big story, and yet the media focuses on the first. And I, and I think there's just some need to recognise there's good news stories that also can sell. You know, one war is chasing another war, and one dramatic situation is chasing another dramatic situation in the media nowadays. Uh, but we tend to forget that, okay, uh, 
the Haitian disaster led to many people migrating. But three years afterward, what is the situation? What are the positive aspects? The media should be some, something more thoughtful, something more refreshing, something that has a longer term perspective rather than simply focusing on this day-to-day -day analysis.